fisingen also konkret bewies so kann bilder mehr pro plus so kann sei ahmed hayut nara und wo mehr da nara planer da nara hilft til mit not mit da her brot da hi guys this is matthias and this is going to be another one of those rather unusual videos on my uh, YouTube channel because this one is not going to be about gaming. Now, this video is going to be about criminality and other problems in the Swedish society that are related to immigration. Now, the fact is that I did have this uh, video planned for quite a while. I've been gathering material for several months and spent even more time actually fact-checking whatever I have found. And I'm not gonna lie. Fact-checking in Sweden, that is not an easy thing to do. Now initially, this video was mainly going to be about integration. And this word, integration, is one of the words that has become the most sacred words in the Swedish society. But then, as I reached the point where I was going to start editing this video, this happened. A 39-year-old illegal immigrant from Uzbekistan hijacked a truck, and a few minutes before 3 p.m., he used his truck to commit a terror attack on Drottninggatan in the capital of Sweden, Stockholm. Now, because of this terror attack, I decided not to continue with this video the same way as I had planned. And the reason for that is because the way I had planned to make this video and what I wanted to focus on is how media and politicians try to cover up and hide problems related to immigration. Now, one of the things that changed after this attack was how especially politicians talked about illegal immigrants. It did not have the same effect that I thought it would have on journalists, but politicians, there was a massive change. Now, when it comes to immigration especially, but in many other areas as well, Swedish politicians and journalists are lying, self-serving, disgusting, hypocritical human beings. Sweden in this regard is a disgrace to democracy and freedom. Now, you would think that uh, the terror attack in Stockholm would make them come to their senses, but no, they don't. All they care about is their own popularity, and right after the terror attack, the popular opinion was to have a very conservative and hard standpoint against illegal immigrants or immigrants that had been denied Swedish citizenship and asylum status. Now, even the leaders of the established political parties in Sweden suggested stuff like... Uh, taking immigrants into custody, you know, actually locking them up during the time that they were waiting for their deportation. And, well, of course, also this. Now, before this uh, terror attack, any of these suggestions would have been absolutely unthinkable. And as much as I agree with these suggestions, I think they're good, they are based on nothing but emotions. And that is something that is completely acceptable for any concerned citizen of any country, but when it comes from the politicians that are in power, things like this needs to be thought through. And thinking, that is not Swedish politicians' strong suit. At least not when it comes to immigration. We've seen that for the last 25, 30 years or so. Now the one thing that is bothering me tremendously with the reactions from the politicians after this attack is how they are completely neglecting the problems with immigrants that have received Swedish citizenships and second generation immigrants. Which in my opinion is a much, much bigger problem than the ones that are here illegally. Now, as I'm sure you know, there has been a number of terror attacks in Western countries, and they are almost exclusively committed by either immigrants or second-generation immigrants, but illegal immigrants are not that highly represented. One of many examples is Khalid Masood, who committed the attack in London only a few weeks before the attack in Stockholm, and these two attacks were carried out in a way that was quite similar to one another. As a matter of fact, Khalid Masood was very far from being an illegal immigrant. Now, this terrorist that committed the horrible attack in Nice was no illegal immigrant either. I'm pretty sure we could go on here. Now, if you have followed any of the uh, news regarding immigrants and immigration problems in Sweden, you may have heard something called no-go zones. Now, the term no-go zones for these areas in Sweden are very debated, and depending on who you're asking, you'll get a very different opinion and explanation about these uh, areas. Some people will even deny that they exist at all. Now, basically, there are three different classifications of these so-called no-go zones. The ones that are in red are the most dangerous ones, and the ones in orange are the least problematic. All in all, there is 53 of these areas in Sweden at the release of this video. Me, I live in this area, in Gothenburg, the second largest city in Sweden. 
or maybe we should call it Gotham of Sweden. Now, as much as Sweden has the most disgusting, self-serving cowards as journalists, there are a few exceptions. And quite a number of those exceptions actually works on the Gothenburg Post. And even though all established news medias actually do bring up this problem from time to time, most of them only do so when it's absolutely impossible to deny a specific event. Now this particular article that you're watching here is based on the observations made by a Norwegian journalist who wanted to investigate the situation in Gothenburg. One of his observations was 120 photos of the most dangerous criminals in this town. Out of these 120 photos, there was six that looked like they were actually Swedish. The rest of these photos was on immigrants. So another thing that I want to bring up that has uh, received quite a bit of attention the very last few years, even though it has been systematically denied and uh, diminished as much as possible by Swedish media and politicians, is uh, what is considered relatively new crimes in Sweden. And we're talking only about heavy crimes where the perpetrator is dangerous to other people. Honor crimes is uh, one of those categories. This is about anything from threats and striking fear in the victim to actual assault and murders. Organized crimes against emergency personnel. This is uh, police officers, firefighters and ambulance personnel. The most common, I believe, is throwing rocks and a Molotov cocktails on either the policemen or ambulance personnel themselves or the vehicles. Unfortunately, unlike what this article says, I believe that this is very common. The third one is clone or relative-based criminality, meaning that it is one or several families that are related to one another's that are controlling the organized criminality within a certain area. The last two are group rapes or group sexual assault, both against women and men. So now, up until the last few years, maybe the last five or ten years actually, journalists and politicians have been very successful when it comes to denying this as immigration problems. But this doesn't really work anymore, because the problem is too big and it cannot be hidden anymore. And here I would like to bring up another example from a town called Kalmar. And notice, if you look on a map, how far it is from Kalmar to any so-called no-go zone. Now, obviously, a lot of you guys who are watching this have no idea where in Sweden Kalmar is located, so I'll point it out for you on another map. Basically, it's directly south of Stockholm to the east, very close to this island called Öland. Now, pay attention when I show up the other map again, how far it is from Kalmar to any so-called no-go zone. Now, this article about Kalmar that I'm referring to here is uh, from a magazine that is uh, rather controversial. There are a few of these that has popped up in Sweden over the last couple of years. Now, as I've been searching for facts and articles about immigration problems, I've come across quite a number of, uh, should I say, smaller web magazines that, uh, in this case, focuses on the negative side of immigration. And I'll give you my point of view about that later on in this video. Basically, the ones that I will be focusing on are the three that I just showed you here. It's uh, Fria Tider, Av Pixlat, and Nyheter i Dag. Just imagine if you English-speaking people understood the lies and the shit that was written in Swedish media every day. It's unbelievable. You'd have to actually see it to believe it. But basically, these magazines have popped up because the traditional Swedish news organizations, they don't cover immigration problems in a way that gives you an idea of how big the problem actually is. And despite that, you can still find quite a lot. So now what you may or may not have heard about Sweden is also that there are many studies that shows that criminality hasn't really gone up all that much. And I would like to address that a little bit here as well. There are specific violent crimes in Sweden that has gone down. And here it is quite important to understand some of the Swedish traditions. One of them is alcohol. Yes, we are Vikings and we drink. Now, aside from just drinking to get drunk and go crazy and have fun, we also drink based on tradition. Toasting, whenever we celebrate something, especially during any holiday, at a birthday or a wedding, or for example, at the end of a speech. Now, normally these traditions doesn't bring much violence in themselves, but drinking does have a lot of negative effects on the Swedish society and when it comes to criminality and especially domestic violence. However, this is a problem that we are very well aware of. We have been working actively against it for I don't know how many years. And as you can see in the statistics that I'm bringing up here, you'll see that we've also made quite a bit of progress. 
As you can see on the lower purple line, the number of victims of alcohol-related crimes has gone down from 2005 to 2013. Here you see statistics from 1990 to 2010, and both the upper darker lines shows both the perpetrator and the victims of alcohol-related crimes. The lower brighter lines shows the same thing, but this is regarding drugs. So now obviously when you're mixing the decreased numbers of typical Swedish crimes with the massive increase of the crimes related to immigrants, this information can be misused to make believe that the problems with criminality regarding immigrants is smaller than it actually is. On top of that, Sweden is a country where computers are used a lot. The internet is used a lot. And aside from South Korea, Sweden is the country in the world that has the best internet. This has also had the effect that young people in Sweden are committing less crimes. Now comparisons like what you just saw me do there are few and far between in Sweden. And it is extremely controversial to bring that up. But that is Sweden. Neither Norway, Denmark or Finland has the same hypocritical and lying agenda. All these neighboring and in many regards very similar countries to Sweden are a lot more open about talking about these problems just like most other countries in the world, to be honest. I don't think I will ever understand how lies and misinformation can be so successful for such a long time in an entire country as they've been about immigration in Sweden. Now, these statistics are from Denmark. It shows a heavy overrepresentation among crimes when it comes to immigrants, but it's even worse among their children, so called second generation immigrants. So now we have another quite controversial topic. Well, everything I bring up in this video is controversial, but it is about something that I can't even find a translation for into English. But it has become very, very common that the immigrants that come to Sweden are classified as children, and the term is ensamkommande flyktingbarn. I will kind of roughly translate that into lone coming refugee children. Now the term here gives you the impression that it is a child that comes to Sweden by itself, without any parents or relatives taking care of him or her. Well, first and foremost, these are almost exclusively men. And in almost all cases, if not all cases, their age or identity or nationality cannot be determined because they have neither passports or any other identification documents as they arrive. Now in Sweden it is very very beneficial for you to be below the age of 18 compared to being above the age of 18 both when it comes to your chances of getting into Sweden or having a refugee status, but also if you commit a crime, because the punishment that you will get if you are below 18 is basically nothing, and that is even if the nature of the crime is very, very brutal, such as violently attacking, beating and raping a young woman, or even raping and beating a young child. Now, Sweden is the country where the majority of our journalists and our politicians will heavily prioritize their own social status, this by being politically correct, as it's called, over people's safety and well-being. Now this is why I, despite the fact that I'm actually a gaming YouTuber, has occasionally started making videos such as this. I know that people will hate me for what I'm saying. I know that people will associate me with racism and call me a racist for what I'm saying. But I'm prepared for that, and I will stand up for what I believe in. And I will always prioritize the safety and security of any young girl above my own reputation. So let me translate parts of this article. A 14-year-old girl was raped by two older students at the same school. A journalist met the mother of one of these rapists, and she's lived in Sweden for about nine years, and she barely speaks Swedish, so they need an interpreter. Now she says that her son has told her not to talk to journalists because they're lying. Well... She's actually correct about that, to be honest, but not in the sense that she thinks. So she says this. Here in Sweden, if a child does a tiny little thing wrong, the authorities are being involved because a child just can't be a child in Sweden. So apparently, according to her, it wasn't her son that did something wrong when he and his friend raped a 14-year-old girl. Now, one of the things that I find really interesting when foreign media brings up Swedish problems is that in foreign media... It seems like people believe that uh, some of these immigration problems are something new. This is an article from 1996 by a very famous Swedish journalist called Jan Giu. He is still active as a journalist, but he is much more politically correct now than this article suggests. This headline says this. This is why Swedish prisons are full of immigrants. 
And yes, make no mistake about when this article was written. Now, funny as it is, in the beginning of the article, he brings up some problems with Finnish people who uh, caused some problems while drinking. And yes, Sweden has had quite a number of Finnish immigrants because during the 60s and the 70s, we needed people for our industry. And believe me, if there was a reason for me to bring up Finnish people as a problem when it comes to immigration, I would have done so. In this article, jong also brings up a trend during the 80s with increased violence towards women and sex crimes. This was, according to jong the first time when there was actually a reason for any investigation into whether or not immigrants had any overrepresentation in crimes. Further down, he brings up how in a Swedish television show, I believe from the news actually, from, you know, the government-controlled TV stations. Now, this was, of course, very controversial and considered racism. And because of that, the Swedish Institution for Crime-Related Statistics, Brå, was assigned to investigate in order to determine that the gypsies did not have any overrepresentation in theft. Unfortunately, the investigation showed the opposite of what they wanted. Therefore, the investigation was classified. And I quote, This political morale to silence unwanted facts hindered for a long time any sensible journalism in the subject immigrants and criminality. So here I would like to make another quote, if I may. Immigrants has certain talents that are necessary for drug smuggling. They speak Kurdish, Arabic and Spanish. Now this article goes on about some things that has recently been somewhat okay to start talking about and discussing in Sweden. Issues that most people know about but uh, normally are a little bit too too afraid to talk about. But also some of the most commonly uh, brought up issues such as integration and segregation. Apparently problems in areas such as Rinkeby and Rosengård were well known already by 1996. Uh, By now, it is widely accepted and an undisputed fact that immigrants are highly overrepresented when it comes to criminality and especially when it comes to uh, violent crimes. But there was also a social cost and an economical cost in this. And here, the lying media and lying politicians are still somewhat uh, successful in their agenda keeping Swedish people from knowing the truth. Now, the segregation has a lot of effects, and that is that a majority of the Swedish people do not actually see or experience the effects of immigration the same way that some school personnel or emergency personnel or social workers experience it if they have to work in these previously mentioned areas. So that means if you live in a typical Swedish area, you probably think that the only way this affects you is a little bit on your tax. But Sweden is already a high-tax country, and Sweden has already a high acceptance for high taxes. But the fact is that whenever we bring in people to our country, they also have the right to our welfare. And just because our politicians are so stupid that they think that it's okay to bring in 160,000 people in one year, that doesn't mean that the capacity for our hospitals are increased at all. Instead, they get a much higher load from people that doesn't speak our language. For example, there has been a massive problem for Swedish women to get the help they need giving birth. And no, this is not an actual Swedish road sign, but I'm sure you understand why people would put them up besides our roads as a protest. Things in a society of any country are connected to one another. This goes for the economy, the population, the education system, and so on. Now obviously by now, some of you guys are wondering, how is it that Swedish people accept this? Why does the same political parties in Sweden still stay in power, despite the fact that they have caused this problem, and instead of doing anything about it, only made it worse for the last 20 or some such years? Now I've heard from foreign news media expressions like legendary Swedish tolerance. Even in the TV show Homeland you hear Carrie Matheson say all forgiving Scandinavia and trust me she refers to Sweden because the rest of Scandinavia is not nearly as forgiving as we are. So are we really that tolerant? Are we truly that forgiving? Honestly I say no it's not tolerance it's ignorance and there are reasons for it. Here you see a list of publicity rules by the Swedish Journalist Union, I think it is, or Association, Covenant, whatever. And the interesting part here is rule number 10. Do not highlight associated people's ethnical origin, sex, nationality, profession, political belongings, religion, or sexuality, unless it is relevant. The bold text translates to this. Be careful with pictures. Now this guideline number 10 has been misused to the point where it's heavily misleading to the Swedish population. 
Interestingly enough, number 12 is about pictures, where it says not to edit pictures in a way so they become misleading. Something that Swedish media has done by making dark pixels whiter to hide the fact that a perpetrator in a crime has dark skin. These pictures are textbook examples where you cannot determine the nationality or origin of a perpetrator. Now believe it or not, up until about the last five years or so, this has been a very very successful way of hiding the truth. But even now, there are still people that believe that the problem is much smaller than it actually is. And as much as I can understand that in a video like this, it comes across as though media is really covering this and really brings the problem to the public's attention. Fact of the matter is that, combined with the rest of the news reports, these types of articles are quite rare. Especially considering how common these crimes actually are. Now another thing that highly impacts Swedish people's personal opinions about this is what we see in our own personal lives. And because of segregation and lack of integration, most of us never sees this. And Swedish media and Swedish politicians have been very successful in trying to minimize the problem and try to blame it on our own society. Whenever there are crimes and problems related to immigrants, it is our fault for not taking care of them good enough. Now one of the most telling ways that explains why Swedish media have been so successful at lying about immigrant problems is the success of the Sweden Democrats. This is the only Swedish party that openly wants to have a more restrict immigration in Sweden. Over the last few years this party has had a massive success. They have grown from being literally nothing to the second biggest party in Sweden this in about 15 years. But the most telling thing is not their overall success, but where they have been successful. Basically it's this. The more immigrants in an area of Sweden, the more popular the Sweden Democrats are, and vice versa. This means that in the southern part of Sweden, the Sweden Democrats are really big, and in the northern part of Sweden, they are basically still nothing. This is because in the northern part of Sweden, there are very few immigrants. And therefore people in the north, they either ignore the problem because it doesn't really concern them, or they believe in the news and they think it's not as bad as it really is. So now who are these lying hypocrites that I've been talking so much about? Well here's one, Oshin Cantwell, I think I'm probably mispronouncing this. Now this journalist that works on Aftonbladet, he normally only brings up the immigration problem if he can use it in a way to make people seem like racists or maybe draw the parallels to Nazi Germany, stuff like that. He is quite far to the left uh, in a Swedish political standpoint, not sure how far. And if he ever makes an article that actually makes immigrants look bad, this only happens in the cases where the stories cannot be hidden or diminished and when the other major news outlets of Sweden are going to cover the story anyway. In this article he asks himself, why is it that uh, three immigrants will rape and film the rape of a woman and live send this on Facebook. Now the theory that he brings up is that these immigrants doesn't know that what they're doing is illegal. It's happened repeatedly that immigrants that rapes Swedish women uses the excuse in court that they thought this was not illegal. Now, the journalists on Aftonbladet, they normally do not hesitate to call somebody a racist, a Nazi, a bigot or Islamophobic, etc. When they talk about somebody that has a different political opinion about immigration. Now, journalists like this completely dominates the Swedish news. Now obviously the effects of these news are the biggest where the problems are the smallest. And you need to realize that while there is a lot of immigrants in certain areas of Sweden, a lot of people live in areas that looks like this and they never see those problems themselves. So if you live in the northern part of Sweden, or if you live in areas like in Aschim in Göteborg, Vasastan or Östermalm in Stockholm, then you are probably not going to have to worry about your car being set on fire, your children being raped, robbed or assaulted. No riots are going to affect you personally, and if you actually need an ambulance because your life is in danger, there's probably not going to be like 10 or 20 immigrants throwing rocks or molotovs at that ambulance or its personnel. And then it's probably also quite easy to focus on your own social status and to be politically correct. And the fact is that most Swedish politicians and journalists live in quite a safe distance from any of these problematic areas where there is a lot of crimes related to immigration. Malik here, you heard it, he has had a short contact with Sepp when he comes home. In general, ingen kontakt med några myndigheter och det gäller även andra IS-resenärer som vår eh, 
reporter har pratat med. Varför ser det ut så? Ja, och jag kan bekräfta den bilden. Det ser tyvärr ut så. Oh my god, how much I wish you people understood Swedish. This interview is so unbelievably stupid that there is no way I can retell it and you would actually believe me. This is a minister of Sweden and she is so unbelievably ignorant and unqualified for her work that I can't even put words on it. Now she is a Swedish minister, the minister of democracy. Simply put, she probably was given this job because she is a woman and she has an immigrant background. It is far more important for Swedish politicians to show diversity than to show competence. And the lack of competence in this interview knows no bounds. Basically, they're talking about ISIS warriors. There's been like 300 of them, and they live off of the Swedish welfare system. And what they do is that they go back and forth to countries like uh, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, this to fight for ISIS. Now, this problem is one of the biggest embarrassments for the European Union. Now, I know Sweden is really bad here, but I think... I'm not sure if it's Netherlands or Belgium that is even worse than us. Now, honestly, when I first heard that, I didn't actually believe it, but I think it's true. Now, this woman is no longer responsible for handling extremism in Sweden. Now, here comes an even more disturbing interview. I'll translate this, actually. If the woman wants to leave the house, there are certain requirements. First and foremost, she is only allowed to leave the house if her husband has allowed it. Now, this is a speech that is supposed to educate Muslims about how to mix with the population in Western countries. It was arranged by the Swedish Society of Muslims, something like that. They have received about 50,000, a little bit more than 50,000 euros from the Swedish government just for, well, I guess, for being an organization. I'll keep translating. For a woman to leave her home, there has to be a reason for it. For example, if she needs to go shopping, if she needs, needs to visit the hospital or a relative. Now, these two men, they're joking around, they're laughing, they're having fun, just talking about how women basically have no rights of their own. And even if they live in Sweden, they have to follow, I guess, uh, the Muslim traditions of the countries where they come from, whatever countries that is. Here they talk about how women are supposed to be dressed. They have to cover their body from head to feet. And she is not going to wear perfume. Again, they're joking, laughing, having fun. And they seem to be enjoying themselves. And now let me continue translating what he says here. A woman is not supposed to joke around, laugh, talk or ask a bunch of questions. She's only supposed to talk when it's needed. I also think he says she is to fear Allah as much as possible. Maybe I'm mistaking there. But at the time when I'm making this video, I believe that this man and his organization is under Swedish investigation. It will probably lead to nothing, but I guess we'll wait and see. It's på flera håll och nu har vi med oss Lars Byström från Stockholms polisen. Lars, kan du ge en bild av vad det var som hände igår kväll? Ja, det stämmer. Man hade ju en tillståndsgiven fest i Kungshamn och anledningen av nyåret är det iranska och sen dök det då upp under Så ja, during the celebration of the Iranian New Year in Stockholm, Sweden there was the normal amount of gang related violence that could be expected. And again Aftonbladet brings these problems up when the problems are so big that they actually can't hide it or deny it. Now I could make this video hours and hours and hours long but before I end the video, I want to bring up a few more things that I think are rather important. First and foremost, this is not my regular content. I'm a gaming YouTuber, also a streamer on Twitch, and at the moment focusing on Battlefield 1. However, I made this video because I'm just the kind of person that cannot just sit silently while this shit is happening. And I really want to warn the people of other Western democracies about what could happen in your countries. Now, before I end this video, I would like to talk about some of the uh, web magazines, so to speak, that I've come across as I've been looking for more and more information about this. And I want to say that if you, for any reason, are interested and wants to gather facts about immigration problems, you need to be very, very careful. And it's important that you don't let emotions get the best of you and let yourself get fooled. There are a lot of shady sites out there. And just because we have a lot of disgusting, hypocritical, self-serving liars working on the established news outlets, that does not in any way mean that we can give a free pass to all these alternative news 
that has recently started popping up. Check your facts and don't be stupid. So now let me bring up a couple of other people that I have learned quite a lot from and uh, I'm going to start here with a Swedish YouTuber called Angry Foreigner. Now this guy makes a lot of videos that are relatively similar to the one that you're watching now, but unlike me, he does it on a regular basis. Now even though he is an immigrant here in Sweden from former Yugoslavia, he does speak English on his YouTube channel, so you're not gonna have to worry about understanding what he's saying. The next guy is a man called Douglas Murray. Now this guy is someone I've also seen a lot on YouTube, and when I've watched him, it's almost exclusively when he's been in a debate about immigration. Douglas Murray seems to be very, very knowledgeable, and I believe him to be a very good source of information, if that is something you're looking for. Next up here we have Tino Sanadaji. I'm just guessing that pronunciation, probably wrong. Either way, he is a Kurdish immigrant to Sweden and he is a national economist. And obviously because he is uh, relatively critical to immigration from an economical point of view, he is also, of course, rather controversial. But now speaking about controversial, this guy beats them all. This is Milo Yiannopoulos. And despite the fact that this guy is very knowledgeable, he is very well spoken, he is also definitely a troll. Now, despite the fact that this guy has a lot of quite viable information, he is rude to people, he insults people, and he takes pride in the reactions he gets while doing so. And now I just explained to you what a troll is as if you needed me to do that. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. So yeah, whatever you feel about me after watching this video, my name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching.